here. And we're gonna boil for another eight hours. It's the same color as maple syrup. So it's as it passes through the adapter with all of the pork, I don't think we had this bucket there. And it's you are going to the maple syrup festival. Oh, you had to pay there. Yeah. On that side. Okay. Well, I don't know. Or is it either side? I don't know. Uh, either side, I guess. Okay. We are on Courtright Maple Syrup Festival. Welcome, everybody, and follow us. We're going to walk through the trail and show you the maple syrup. And here's Leslie, Emily, and we're looking for the rest of the group. Okay, so follow us. We're going to the trail and look for the sap and see how the maple syrup is being produced. the building information you can get the map here oh you can eat here yeah. inside the chalet and you can get all the maple syrup here's the maple syrup here they're they're walking they're still walking and look at the packet of four liters. Oh wow. Four liters of maple syrup. And let's see. What do you do? Oh, look at all that stones. Emily, the maple syrup here is more expensive. Mm. No, that's portable. I don't wanna. There's Bing, there's Florence, there's Raymond, Vandy. Okay, we're going to the demonstration. Look at all this. Are these all maple trees, hon? Hmm? Are they ma maple trees, all these trees? No. Okay, our first stop is the demonstration. Mm. Okay. It's amazing. The working and you smiling. It's not like to make a hole <laughs> to get the sap, I guess. Yeah, so they're practicing drilling holes with our abrasive bit, which is what you would use to drill a small hole in the tree to collect the sap from. So you guys are welcome to use our bracing bits on our demo post and have a go at it yourself. It is pretty fun once you get the hang of it. Um, and here at Tree Trivia, we have various other tools and items used throughout the maple syrup making process. You will be able to see our other demos if you go down the path here and to your left. So those are sites of how we make maple syrup at different points in history. So each one is different. And the settler site does have some samples for you to try of maple syrup. Is that? Okay, long march. Okay, we're gonna go. Where it all begins. Okay, let's walking now. Ice, yeah, be careful, it's ice. Over there, over there. Oh, look at the dog, he's enjoying it. Okay, we're gonna go down the hill. Oh my. It's being okay to get back up. So Lizzie, you ready for the trail walk on this cold day? Just now starting our walk, going to the the maple saps, looking for the maple trees, and this is gonna be a long walk. 
being in Florence are thinking if they're gonna come down. So, here. What's this one here? How's you? Oh, red. Oh, we have red maple. So you can have it. Yeah, and that's in, in four years. In four years' time, we can get sap. We can get the maple syrup in four years' time. Dogs can have two taps producing just over 80 liters of sap this year. That sap will make two liters of syrup in this bottle. Oh, wow. See? That's why. Another four years we can have. Oh, this is Grandpa Maple. Oh, wow. Wow. Oh, wow. Wow, that's a Grandpa Maple. Grandpa Maple. Oh, look. This is one of the oldest sugar maple trees in our forest. It's made it to be between 250 and 300 years old. Wow. Imagine how much this area must have changed since oh, the mid I didn't even know that. This tree was just a sapling. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody made a face, the grandpa maple. They said that's, that's the oldest one in this area. Oh, wow. The discovery. Oh, wow. Oh, look at that. What kind of animal is this? Oh, my gosh. What kind of animal? Raccoon. Raccoon. Mm, and this one? It's a fox. And this is beaver. I also have coyote. Coyote! Oh, wow. Indigenous people used to use this as insulation. No. Oh, wow. One of the reasons why I'm holding coyote. this is really warm. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Yeah, hold it, Emily. You want to hold it? No. The Yeah. Well, this house has been boiling out all day. It used to be filled up. Uh, this is a smaller quantity. They would have probably been making something like this. A whole wooden log. Okay, keep walking. Just follow the trail. And there's the tree over there. And here's Ken. Hello. What can you say, hon? It's interesting. Yeah? Hmm? Cold enough for you? It's a beautiful... Yeah, it's not very cold. Yeah. And look at all the trees. There. And there's Bing and Florence. Hi. How do you like it? Yeah. How do you like it? Are yeah. you learning a lot? That's why it's expensive. It's 95 to 99 percent water. Oh, that's Where's why. Going? Oh, there. There's so, nothing inside. It's either water or literally. I don't, I don't really know. Mm. Mm. Google it. So there, there's the thing now. <laughs> the old fashioned side. Okay.
my friend Auntie Maple, once she's done her presentation, she'll teach you guys actually once we gathered the sap, we do this for Yeah, right? I think it's um, better than the one at the inside. You can hold it up here. I'm you can let it rest on your shoulders like you do your backpack. <laughs> oh, there you go. No hands. Awesome. Do you want to try? Okay. And if you guys haven't um, seen the presentation yet, she's going to start it very shortly. So we'll start to gather in there. But if you've already seen it. Heavy, right? Not too bad? So okay, let's see. Full try of quickly water. Okay, you let's see. Try? Face this way. That would be hard. Okay, and face that way. Uh, Thanks, uh, I'm really heavy. 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 Okay. Awesome. Very good. Is it less boiling? Oh wow. Sorry? Would it would it be less boiling time then if there's less? Um so it's a really kind of you're doing it by eye. Eyes, yes. So um because we didn't really have any tools, any like refined tools, um these pans would really be like the only measurement units to gauge that. So one full, one full pan. Exactly, exactly. And these were typically made in Europe and then shipped over. And families actually uh, communally would invest in a set of three because they were so expensive. It would be like the equivalent of like a car today, so like 20 grand. Um, but yeah, so those were kind of the only units of measurement, if that answers your question. Yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah. 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 And it's many, many buckets of sap, so probably around like 40 buckets of sap, so a lot. Yeah. I'm just gonna give um, a couple more moments. I know there's some stragglers behind you guys to just join in talk to her about the yolks but all of the sap in this big papa kettle that we have here was actually brought down by children using the yolks bucket by bucket into this big kettle here Ooh, she's got a big mouthful of smoke okay. and um, since we're boiling down the maple syrup we're using heat to evaporate the water out of the sap. And what does this look like to you? Does this look like syrup? No. No, what does it look like? Water. That's right. That's because sap is a lot of water and a little bit of... That's right. Awesome. No, thank you. I appreciate it. And so we are using the process of evaporation, which is why you see all of this steam evaporating and so after eight hours of boiling scoop by scoop we're going into this mama kettle here and we're gonna boil for another eight hours so we have eight hours here eight hours here how many hours is that 16, 16. yes correct and what color is the liquid here it's, it's clear, but it has a little bit of a tint. A little bit. Yeah. So we are making some progress. That's how we can tell where we are relative to where we need to be. And so after those 16 hours, we're doing scoop by scoop into baby kettle. What color is the liquid here? Brown. Light brown. Yeah, it's like a golden, almost ambery light brown Amber. or like a tan. Still very watery. Still very watery. Good noticing. It's not thick at all. So we are going to actually boil for another eight hours. And what is eight times three? 24. 20, 24. 20, 24. I said it. Really good. And how many hours, hours are in one day? 24. So how many days does it take to make maple syrup? One day. That's right. In the 1800s, it took one whole day to make maple syrup. And so after those 24 hours, since we're in an outdoor kitchen, we want to filter the syrup from any impurities. So I would take either an old t-shirt from my dad or maybe like an old dishcloth from my mom and filter that out bit by bit. 
Why would we want to filter this out? Also, if the smoke is going in your eyes, please feel free to move. It's not a pleasant sensation, so don't make yourself suffer. <laughs> what could fall in these kettles that we would not want? Like germs, dirt, grime. Yeah, exactly. Dirt could fall in there, leaves could fall in there, bugs could fall in there, anything here could fall in there. And I don't want that on my pancakes, right? So after we filter that out and we let it cool down, I'm gonna come around and show you the color it's actually the same color as maple syrup, so it's that really dark brown, right? Mm -hmm. Look at that. The same color as those lollipops. One good one. <laughs> it takes 40 buckets to get a bucket of maple syrup. Ontario maple syrup. This is so nice. Sugar shock. If you look up in the shop, you will see prostituting in This is the modern way of getting the sap. And it drops here. So, what's in here? <laughs> what? This is where they collect the centralized. The, uh, the pipe? Oh, this is the modern way of doing it. Commercial way. I see. So I'm just going to let everyone file out and then I'll ask everyone at the front of the line. sit on our benches. Okay, we're about to start. So this is just water that I'm pouring because it's just a demonstration site. We're not actually trying to create maple syrup here. So I'm just trying to make sure that I can... Well, it's good, so I just fill it up with water. There's water in there. But usually you would not put water in there. Let's just try to do a recap of what we've seen already. Do you guys remember what the indigenous people, how they collected sap? What did they use to collect sap with? Does anybody remember what it was? What was it? They used... They either use a birch bark basket, so this is right here, this is what they would use. Birch bark baskets. You guys remember what the early European settlers used? They didn't use this, they used something else. Does anybody remember what it was? What was it? Anybody remember what it was? <laughs> yeah, the middle bucket. That's what it was. And now, thanks to Farmer Michelle, what do we do now? What do we use now? Yes. Yeah, we just use teams collecting now. We don't need buckets anymore. So from there, from our team, we actually collected into our storage tank. Michelle showed you one. Here's our other one. It holds 1,200 liters of sap. That's enough to have seven and a half liters of these buckets over here, or 30, uh, 30 liters. So from 1,200 to 30 liters. Now this is a main show over here. This is called the adapter. This is how we or maples to go from sap to syrup. If we were to look from over here, this is how it looks inside, or from the uh, diner above it. If we follow our eyes, it travels from this pipe over here and into the evaporator. This evaporator inside is actually slanted so that the sap can go through a flow have different channels. As it passes through the evaporator, it goes through the different channels and becomes more and more concentrated. But how is it becoming more and more concentrated? What is coming out of this evaporator? Water. See, I heard steam, yes. The water's coming out and then steam's coming out. When, the, when you have water coming out, it, it turns into steam. So how's the steam um, coming? What, what do you need for steam to occur? Yes, and do you know where the fire is for this, uh, this evaporator? Yeah, it's right here, right here. So this is our fire box. That is why we have to make sure we have this, um, the fire, uh, some firewood over here, because this does require a lot of firewood. So I have to constantly, for every presentation, to throw a piece in there, because you have this fire, um, to keep the fire going, the evaporator going. 
So by having this enclosed now, you might remember from the early European day I had it out in the open. Well, that wasn't really efficient for heat because it's out in the open, you're losing a lot of heat. Now, by modern day, we enclose it and that really saves the heat. The heat goes where it needs to really go. And you're probably wondering, okay, how does, why doesn't it smell in here like the early European site? We don't smell that fire smoke anymore. We don't see that smoke. Where do you think it's exiting from the smoke? Chimney. Yeah, our chimney over here. So it comes up from the chimney. Now we do have a lot of um, evaporation occurring. You're probably wondering, how does this all the steam leave this place? Because usually this actually would be cold, so we don't want animals to come through and pests and whatnot. Well, this room is actually pretty special. We have this rope here that when we pull it, it opens up from the top. So it's pretty easy to open and close it. Uh, open it up for the steam to come, uh, to leave. So from here, the channels of, the, um, if we were to look at this area over here, at the beginning of the channel, what do you think, well, how would the uh, sap look at that? Let's try to guess. How would the sap look? Yeah, water, it's just clear, yeah. It's just the, it's just the sap. And how do you think then, if it was to go, out into the finishing pan over here. So it moves from here into the finishing pan. What color or how do you think it might look at the finishing pan? Brown. Brown. Yeah. So it's, it, this is uh, basically a finished product. We do water down this again to keep the demonstrations going. But if it is too watery, we could just take it over here to this. Um, here we have a propane tank and we just light up this and now we just, we'll finish it up in here. When it is done and it's all good and we're ready to eat it, or store it, we just, or put it in the jars, I mean, we just open up this tap here and it just goes like this. Here we do have a filtering system of our own. We have one filter like this that we can make it go through. And we also have a strainer with a hole through it. That really helps get rid of any debris or mess that might have gone through. There. This, I guess, was a little, a one time, we accidentally had this door open, it took a few years ago, we had this door open slightly, and raccoons were able to figure out how to open it, so they came in through here. They came in, they actually played around with this, and they were able to open this up like this. And the maple syrup was all over the floor, because I don't think we had this bucket there, and it just flowed everywhere, or I think it overfilled this bucket. And yeah, there was just paw prints everywhere and just mess everywhere. And we didn't find out until the next day. Oh well, yeah, now we learn to always lock our doors because of that. So if we were to look up much sugar left in the tree trunk, so you have to boil it and boil it for a, long, a longer period of time. Now this one over here is the one that chefs prefer. It's more of a light buttery taste. But this is the one you probably know more about, the dark one. That's the one people really love because it's a really strong maple flavor, the dark one. Again, it's all just 66.5% uh, sugar, and it's all the same consistency, all thick. It's just related to the season. It's all related to how high you make your temperature. So this one's actually at 104 degrees Celsius. That's how you get maple syrup. But if you were to raise up the temperature a bit more to 110, you can get maple butter. And even up to 131, you can get taffy. So what you could do if you had maple syrup at home, just raise up the temperature with a candy thermometer, you can check it for 131 degrees Celsius, and you can get taffy, and you just roll, the, uh, put it out to the snow or ice, and you can roll it up with a stick, and you can get maple taffy with that. In our store, in the sugar shop, we do have the syrup, the butter, and I the to uh, taffy. In the sugar shop and the, the gift shop. Can make our own. Now, we're not the only ones that produce uh, this sort of we don't, we're not the only ones with sugar maple trees. There's many other places in Ontario and Quebec and even just in New Brunswick that have the tree as well. But in the United States, there are more uh, locations that have it. But in Canada, is the one that produces the most amount of maple, so far, that produces the most, uh, most amount of maple, too, uh, maple syrup. If we were to look over here, this just tells us how much sugar or how much calorie there is in maple syrup. <laughs> Maple syrup is on the low end for calories compared to something like brown sugar and honey. So it's pretty good calorie-wise. Recently, um, they discovered
River Quebec Falls in maple syrup, and it's a unique nutrient to maple, uh, just maple syrup in general. So it's the only one you can find in uh, maple syrup. And that concludes the presentation. Thank you for listening. I'll have the door open in the back. You guys can take it. Okay, what's... <laughs> That's how big the tree gets. The trunk. No. Okay, end of tour, everybody. That's it. It's so cold. <laughs> so we're done, right? Finish. It's nice, eh? To see. Beautiful Yeah. See, there they are. We're going back up the hill now. Mm -hmm. We just go through this place shorter. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to that building over there. That building to warm up. Going up. Yeah. So, okay, we're going up now. We're go going back to the chalet. There. Going back up. Thank you guys for watching. There's Bing. Bing, Florence, okay? Okay. Yeah, yeah okay, good. Okay. One, two, three, go. Okay, finish your energy. <laughs> Come on. Look how beautiful. Two, three. One, two, three, go. Tang, ting, 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 tang, tang. Ting, 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 tang, tang. Tang. Oh, wow, Lucy, you're good. We don't have the music. Oh, wow, I love it. I love it.